What's up everyone, Andrew Bainey here, and I think I might have one of the biggest eight string guitar collections in the world. If not in the world, at least on YouTube. Maybe the guys in like Mashuga or After the Burial have more than this, I'm not really sure. But anyways, the point of this video is very simple. I've realized that I have amassed a ridiculous collection of eight string guitars. I have 10 of them behind me, and then a couple of bonus ones that I'm gonna talk about in this video. Basically all I wanna do with this video is show off every single eight string guitar that I own, give you a real quick, little rhythm test of each one and talk about all of them because I think they're pretty cool. I've spent a lot of my life now collecting things like this and I think I have a pretty good idea on what makes Snake String good or not, or at least in my opinion. So sit back, relax, and let's enjoy some disgustingly down-tuned guitars. Also in the comments below, let me know which of these eight string guitars is your favorite or if there's any Asian guitars that I don't have in my collection that you think I need to check out. Let's get on with it. So first and foremost, I'm gonna be talking about my Aristides Guitars 080S. This is one of the newest guitars in my collection and the newest A-string guitar in my collection. This is a custom guitar built in the Netherlands by a company called Aristides. This is my fourth guitar from this brand. I'm a huge fan of them and this guitar is absolutely amazing. So if you're unfamiliar with Aristides guitars, basically they are made out of one solid piece, as you can see on the back. It's not bolt on, it's not neck through. This is literally just one gigantic chunk of a proprietary material called Arium. So no aspect of this guitar is made out of wood or any other traditional guitar material. So it's a very non-traditional guitar and to take things even further, I chose to go with one single bridge pickup and a kill switch only, which you can barely see right there. So no volume, no tone, riff, or riffant. This pickup is a Lundgren M8 pickup. It sounds absolutely brutal. That brutal, that's a word now, I guess. Obviously the most striking thing about this guitar is the ridiculous finish, which was made by Richard Faye Swirls. Go check out his Instagram page if you're unfamiliar because he makes awesome swirl finishes. This one was done by him as well. This one has a hip shot, fan fret, bridge, has my custom inlay on the 12th fret, which is just my AB logo in green with yellow, hip shot locking tuners up top. And for this one, I tried to go for like a combination of all of the things I normally like. So it's got yellow, green, black, and purple. Those are kind of the main colors that I seem to usually have on this channel, especially green. And yeah, it's just an awesome guitar. I haven't got to play it nearly as much as I want to because it is still kind of new to me. And then I was away for basically two months on tour and stuff like that. So I've only played this guitar for like maybe a couple hours so far and I definitely need to change that very soon. This is how it sounds. Okay, next up is my other Aristides 8-string. This one is the 080R. So obviously the main difference between this one and the one that I just showed off is this one is a straight scale length. So it's 27 inches straight scale. And it also has this Evertune bridge and a Seymour Duncan Pegasus pickup. Once again, no volume, no tone, kill switch only. This time around it's not a push button, it's just a flip like that. This time around it also has another custom inlay, but this time it is my band Carcosa's inlay. And of course it's bold and beautiful, bright neon yellow because this is the guitar that I use live with my band Carcosa. So out of all of the A-string guitars in my collection, this is the one that I probably play the most and I've taken it all across North America twice now. I've played it for 30 days straight, two times across multiple different weather conditions and all that stuff. And the combination of this material, which again is that Arium proprietary material, along with this Evertune, make this thing pretty much never go out of tune. And it's absolutely awesome to go up on stage and not have to worry about retuning my guitar at all. In fact, I don't even bother to check my tuning a single time when I play live. The only time when I check my tuning is literally when I change strings. Other than that, I just assume it's always in tune, and it's, so far it has been. Other than the Evertune and straight scale, same specs as the other Aristides, Arium body and neck like I said, rich light fretboard, hip shot locking tuners one more time. This one lives constantly in drop E tuning, and it sounds like this.
this one's dusty. I haven't used this one in a while, clearly. I meant to do that. That was on purpose. Oh, okay. Next up is my Solar Guitars A1.8C. This is literally the heaviest guitar I own. And I mean that literally, this thing weighs an absolute ton. This one also features the Evertune Bridge. This was, I believe, the first eight string I ever got with an Evertune Bridge. And it's kind of what sold me on wanting that in my live guitars. This one also has a modification where I put a Seymour Duncan Pegasus pickup in the bridge. So as you can tell, this obviously used to be the main guitar for my band Carcosa before I got that Aristides because it has the same pickup, same Evertune, 27 inch scale. So this was the guitar that got me used to all those specs in the first place. And then I ultimately decided to order that one, which is what I now use live. On one of the tours, I brought this as my backup guitar. On the last tour, I didn't bring it. So I haven't played this one in a little bit. I don't play it nearly as much as I used to, but it still sounds and plays absolutely awesome. Although it is very physically heavy, so playing it live is a little bit uncomfortable, I must say. The neck pickup is still the stock pickup, which is a Duncan Solar something or the other, I can't remember. I'll put it on the screen. Uh, ebony fretboard, I don't remember what the body wood is made out of here. It's probably mahogany or something like that, but again, I'll have the specs on the screen. Locking tuners up top, five-way pickup selector, volume, tone. I don't use any of that stuff. I only use the bridge pickup because again, it was for my band Carcosa. It sounds absolutely awesome still, and it sounds like this. Okay, next up is the second most expensive guitar in my entire collection. This is an Ernie Ball Music Man Majesty 8-string. I got this one on my first tour with my band Carcosa because Sweetwater actually sent it to me, which I still can't believe they did. I basically made a joke to Sweetwater being like, hey, my guitars need setups and I think it would be funny to make a video where instead of getting my guitar set up, I just get two new guitars instead just to like see what Sweetwater would say. And much to my surprise, they agreed. And not only did they agree, but they agreed to send me like basically the most expensive eight string on their entire website. So obviously I'm keeping this one forever and it sounds absolutely awesome. This one has this beautiful flame maple shield right here in this Okolani blue finish, I believe it was called. It's very hard to see as well, but these black parts actually do have a very, very slight blue sparkle to them. It doesn't really show up on camera, but it looks beautiful. These are the DiMarzio pickups, which are exclusive to this guitar. I think it's the Rainmaker and something else. I'll put it on the screen right now. This guitar is basically just packed with features. It's got a fan fret build, obviously, as well which is 25 and a half inch to 27 inch scaling it has a three-way pickup selector with a volume a tone and a second volume which i believe controls the piezo system or piezo system or however the fuck you say that word we got a 12 decibel volume boost we have a coil split and we have the piezo controls up here so this is off blend or full and then flipping over to the back of the guitar we have additional controls up here which give like extra volume and EQ controls to the Piazza system. I personally haven't used this because I don't really use the Piazza system that much, but it's really cool that it has all these features. Obviously locking tuners with the iconic Music Man headstock right there, which looks beautiful. And yeah, this guitar is absolutely packed with features, a bunch of which honestly are things like way above my skill level that I probably don't use nearly as much as most other people would. But it's really cool that I have the features and I've used them here or there throughout a couple of videos. And this guitar just absolutely sounds awesome. It plays like a dream. The only thing I don't love about it is that it has a gloss neck. If you know me, you know that one of the things I don't like is gloss necks. Unfortunately, this guitar does have that, but with the style of music that I play, it doesn't really get in the way because I'm not like a super fast technical shredder. I just don't like the feel of gloss necks because I find that they get a little bit sticky if you sweat. But this guitar is awesome nonetheless, and it sounds like this. Okay, next up is a guitar that is very, very special to me. This was the first ever full custom guitar that I got. It's made by a company called Fast Guitars who unfortunately no longer build, but they were local to me here in British Columbia, Canada. Got to know Kevin Fast, the owner of the company really well. He was a great guy. I worked with him and this company and his other company for many years. Great guy, makes awesome products. 
And this one is the Roamer, which is basically a Jazzmaster shape. At the time when I made this guitar, I feel like I don't think I had ever seen an 8-string Jazzmaster before. If I did, I had maybe seen like one in my life. And to this day, this shape in an 8-string is still extremely rare. So this guitar is very special to me. Like I said, it's the first full custom guitar I got and I still love playing it, even if I play it a little bit less than I used to. I have so many videos on my channel playing this thing because I've had it for so long. It might actually be the oldest guitar that is still in my collection, or one of the oldest ones. So yeah, it has this beautiful avocado burst on the top with spalted flamed maple, bare knuckle cold sweat pickups, the single hip shot, I believe, uh, bridge pieces, Volume, tone, through a pickup selector. This is before I decided I don't like tone knobs and I would have only had the volume if I built it again right now. Ebony fretboard with the obnoxiously giant perloid slanted inlays, which look beautiful. White binding across the whole body of the guitar. Swamp ash body. The other thing that I don't love about this guitar that I wish I didn't do and if I built it again, I would change is you might notice that there is actually no string ferrules on the back. And that's because this guitar, the strings are actually top loaded through the saddles, which is fine and it does the job, but I prefer a string through the body design, which I didn't really think of at the time I was getting this built, but I digress. Uh, stainless steel frets on the neck, of course, and then locking hip shot tuners up top. As you may or may not notice, I love locking tuners and hip shots are some of my favorites. Yeah, this guitar is an absolute beast. I've used it for many, many videos and it still plays, looks, feels, and sounds great. And this is how it sounds. Okay, up next is another guitar that's been in my collection for a very long time, and if you've followed my channel for a while, you've probably seen it before. This is my Ibanez RG852. It is obviously made as a tribute to one of my favorite guitarists of all time, Justin Lowe from After the Burial. Rest in peace, of course. So yeah, this was just a standard uh, Galaxy Black Ibanez RG852 that I found on Reverb for like a stupidly good price, like $800 because the finish on it was all fucked up. So I bought it because I knew that I was going to have it refinished and I didn't care about any finish flaws. So I had it sent off and refinished in basically the closest thing I could find to that LNG lime neon green, I think is what that stands for from Ibanez paint color right here, because that's what Justin Lowe had on his eight string, of course. And then the Seymour Duncan blackout pickups right there. I chose to go for the 852 rather than the 2228, which I think is what Justin used, because I much prefer this style of bridge over the 2228 style bridge, which you'll see on the next guitar, I think. But yeah, so tons of modifications to this. Like I said, the finish, the pickups. I also had the tone knob swapped for a kill switch. So this is when you can see I was starting to get the idea of using a kill switch instead of a volume knob, but I didn't quite have the balls to go full and commit to it at the time. So I still have a volume knob and then the tone knob is replaced with just a momentary kill switch. Uh, Three-way pickup selector the Goto locking tuners, which are standard to this guitar, and everything else is the same as the guitar came. This guitar plays, feels, looks, and sounds absolutely awesome, which I know is what I've said about pretty much all these, but if they stayed in my collection this long, it's for a good reason. I've had this one for a long time as well. I still love playing it, and it sounds like this. Okay, up next is one of my other newest 8-string guitars. This is the Ibanez RGDMS8. So it's the first time they've ever done the RGD style body as an 8-string. And of course, it's multi-scale as well. So again, I believe this is 25 and a half to 27 inch scale, which is pretty much standard for any 8-string multi-scale. That's the most common configuration of that. 
This one has Fishman Fluence modern pickups in the bridge and neck. It has a three-way pickup selector, a coil split down there as well, and then a single volume knob, which is really cool. Those staggered uh, single bridge pieces right there. Go to Locking Tuners. Um, I don't remember the specs in terms of the woods, but I'll put those on screen right now. This guitar has been an absolute joy to play. This is the one that I just brought on the last tour with me as my B guitar, and I actually ended up playing it a lot because the output jack on my Aristides broke about five shows in, and I wasn't able to find a tech to replace that piece for quite a while. Shout out to Matthew Alias, by the way, from my Discord for helping me fix that. But yeah, I brought this on the road without necessarily intending to use it as much as I did, and I ended up using this for like half the tour, and I really liked it. I loved how it sounded, loved how it played, super easy to play. I definitely missed having the Evertune on the stage, because like I said, I'm very used to not tuning my guitar at all. So it took a little bit of, you know, getting used to having to tune a guitar between songs again, because I just haven't done that in so long. But yeah, this guitar is new, but it's absolutely awesome. It's definitely one of my favorite Ibanez 8-strings I've ever played. Definitely my favorite Ibanez 8-string that I've seen them come out with in a very long time, other than this next one, which I'm about to show you. But before that, let's hear how it sounds. <laughs> Okay, next up is the biggest 8-string guitar that I have. This is the Ibanez FTM33. Like I was just saying with the last one, this was my previous favorite 8-string that Ibanez had released in a very, very long time. I waited a really long time to buy this one because here in Canada, these are like $3,000 for some reason. I don't know why they're so expensive because they're made in Indonesia. In my opinion, that's like way too high. So I stuck it out and waited a very, very long time until I finally found one come up for sale used. And that's when I decided to buy it. But this guitar is something that I wanted for a really long time. So I was very excited when I finally got it. I will be honest, I don't play it nearly as much as I thought I was going to, but pretty much any time I make any type of Meshuggah video, this is the Meshuggah guitar. So if you're not familiar, FTM 33 is Frederick Thorndahl from Meshuggah's Guitar 33 is like the number he uses on all his products like Caps 33 and the Fortin 33 pedal and all that. This guitar is ridiculously large. Swamp Ash body, Lundgren M8 pickups, uh, Pau Ferro or Rosewood fretboard, I don't remember, I'll put it on the screen. This one does not have locking tuners unfortunately, but it does have that annoying bridge which I was mentioning during the RG852 segment. So I am personally not a fan of this bridge and nut setup. It's basically all the annoyances of like a Floyd Rose guitar without being a Floyd Rose. So in my opinion, it's very inconvenient. There's lots of moving parts, lots of things that can go missing or break or whatever. So I'm not a fan of this bridge setup, but it's what Meshuggah uses, so it's on this guitar. It's not that bad once you get it set up and working, obviously, but nonetheless, I would have much preferred if this was just like a string through the body, easy hardtail bridge, because it's just much more efficient. But that's enough complaining. This one has a three-way pickup selector and three knobs, which I believe are two volume knobs and one tone, which is kind of weird but it is what it is. No coil splittering or anything like that because Meshuggah doesn't really do that. This guitar is a beast. It sounds awesome like this. Okay, moving on to the second last H-string in my collection. There might be some more bonus ones, but we'll talk about that in a sec. This is from Schechter Guitars, and this is the John Brown Signature Model Tau H-string. These guitars are super popular. I'm very, very happy for John Brown. They've been sold out basically since they came out, and I think I'm one of the only YouTubers to have one. So I'm very, very lucky to own this. Again, big thank you to Adam over at Schechter for sending this one over to me. This guitar is by far my favorite A-string I've ever had from Schecter. I think I've had three or four of them from them, and this one is like way better. I love this guitar. So this one has a hip shot bridge, hip shot locking tuners, and then it has Schecter's own pickups, which were designed in collaboration with John Brown, which I believe are called the Chaos Breaker, I think, but I'll put it on the screen just in case. Single volume knob, which I love. It's also 
pullable as a coil split, and then a three-way pickup selector down there. Nice and simple. Has this beautiful purple finish up top with like a flame maple thing going on. Swamp Ash body on the back, which looks absolutely beautiful as well. Five piece neck right there. And of course an ebony fretboard with stainless steel frets and no inlays, which looks just so clean, so nice. This thing also sounds awesome. I again have not used this nearly as much as I would like to, but that's gonna change because I'm definitely keeping this one in my collection for a very long time, if not forever. And it sounds like this. Okay, and last but not least on my wall of A-strings is the Ormsby Hype GTR. This guitar is from an Australian company called Ormsby Guitars. It's metal as hell. It has this kind of fake patina copper finish, which basically looks like rusted out copper. This is just basically a graphic that was printed onto the body. They do make an actual copper top body guitar that has like a piece of copper on it, but obviously that one is way more expensive. So this one is just a print. Hip shot slanted bridge, volume, tone, three-way pickup selector, and I believe it has a coil split, I think. Yeah, coil split on the tone knob right there. These are Ornsby's own pickups, which I honestly don't love, but they sound good enough. This one is a little bit different because it has a way more extreme fan fret thing going on. I believe the low side is 28 inches instead of 27 inches. So it's about a full inch longer than most eight string guitars. So you can tune it even lower since this is basically like the range that nine string guitars start in. So you can tune it really low if you want to. Uh, it has Ormsby's own locking tuners up top. It has this awesome headstock finish, which has this like harpoon look to it where the strings are suspended over thin air, which just looks absolutely awesome. Swamp Ash body maple neck ebony fretboard with staggered inlays that flip over to the treble side for the high strings so yeah this guitar i haven't played nearly as much but if you've seen it on my channel it's probably because you've seen my doom covers i use this guitar for almost all the doom covers because i had this one tuned all the way down to double drop d because of that extra 28 inch scale length i found that this guitar really shines when you tune it even lower than most other eight strings i don't use it nearly as much as i used to but nonetheless it is still a great guitar the neck shape on it is also a little weird because it's like really really flat on the back with these very pronounced shoulders so the neck shape of this guitar is also a lot different than any of my other ones so yeah all in all this is a bit of a weird guitar it's really good but it just feels very different than any of my other eight strings with that being said this is how it sounds Last but not least, I actually have a couple of extra bonus A-string guitars. So this one is actually my first ever A-string guitar, which is an Ibanez RGA8. As you can see, it has no strings on it. These pickups don't work. They're like spray painted green. The like washers on the headstock were also spray painted green. So this guitar has been through a lot. It currently doesn't work, obviously, because the pickups don't work. And also the bridge is really messed up. As you can see, I had to fully replace this saddle. And then there's supposed to be a screw here, which is anchoring it to the body, which is completely missing. So I've always wanted to get this one back in working condition, but it's gonna be a ton of work. I probably need to buy like a whole new bridge and you like fill this in so that I can screw up, screw into the body again. I don't really know what I'm doing. Um, if you guys would be curious to see a rebuild of this guitar, let me know because maybe that'll finally give me the motivation I need to actually do it because it is something I want to try. I just haven't had the time to do it yet. But yeah, this is my first ever eight string. It came with me for a lot of shows and a lot of my old videos. So depending how long you've been watching my channel, you may or may not have seen it before. The final bonus guitar I wanted to mention is actually this Harley Benton Fan Fret 8 string, which you can see right here. I've modified a ton of this guitar, so I swapped the pickups for Fishman Fluence Modern 9 string pickups, and then I've also swapped the tuners on the back 
for GraphTech ratio locking tuners. There we go. If you could focus camera, that would be nice. There you go. So yeah, a bunch of mods to this guitar that made it sound way, way better. But this is one of the cheapest fan fret eight string guitars you can get on the market. I think when I got this guitar, it was around $300 US or so, which is kind of funny because I'm pretty sure the pickups and the locking tuners equate to more than the value of the guitar itself, but I digress. Now, the reason that I wanted to mention this as a bonus guitar is because I'm actually gonna be giving this guitar away. So if you stuck with me to the end of this video, this is like your little preview of something to come, but literally I'm gonna give this away on my Patreon page. So I wanted to give a thank you to all my Patreon supporters for supporting me for so long. And also I know that the times when I'm away on tour, especially I don't end up really making the type of content that people sign up for my Patreon page for. So I figured I would do a giveaway as like a thank you for sticking around. So if you're already subscribed to my Patreon, you're already entered. That's all you have to do is be a Patreon member and people who are already Patreon members are going to get two entries. And then when I announce this contest, new Patreon signups will get one entry. I know that might not make sense. It'll make more sense when I announce the contest slash giveaway. That's why I haven't done it yet. But anyways, just a little preview of that to come for those of you who stuck around till the end of this video. If you want to potentially win this guitar, I will be giving away over on Patreon very, very soon. So that's all I got to say for this video. Hopefully you enjoyed seeing my ridiculous collection of A-string guitars. Like I said earlier, let me know in the comments below what your favorite A-string guitar is, or if there's any that I don't have in my collection that you really think I should check out. And if anyone has a bigger A-string guitar collection than me, I would love to know about them. So also let me know who that might be in the comments below. That's all I got to say for this video. Thank you for watching. I look forward to your comments and I'll see you next time.